Hey guys, today we will be presenting on acute versus chronic gastritis. So to begin, there are four layers in the stomach wall, as you can see on this diagram. Um, it contains the inner mucosa, submucosa, middle muscular layer, and the outer serous coat. And with acute gastritis, it is dealing with the inflammation of the inner mucosal lining. This is also known as erosive gastritis. So there are many things that causes acute gastritis, such as infections, allergies, acute stress, bile reflux, alcohol abuse, radiation, direct trauma, and medications. And all of these, um, what they all have in common is that they result in an inflammatory response. Now, inflammation is our body's way of fighting back against foreign bodies or irritants. However, this inflammation in the stomach causes pressure, which in um, return causes pain. So dealing specifically with medications or overuse or chronic use of these medications, um, for example, with aspirin, that can cause gastrointestinal bleeding, corticosteroids, decreased inflammation, and NSAIDs, which stands for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, these are things like ibuprofen. They act by blocking enzymes that produce prostaglandins. And these are needed to produce pain in the inflammatory response and stimulate the production of gastric excretions. So by taking this, you have less pain, but you also have less gastric excretions, which means that your stomach lining is more exposed to the acidity of your stomach contents, which causes even more pain. So this is a picture of normal versus acute gastritis. And as you can see, um, the normal looks nice and healthy and with gastritis, you have erosion going on and swelling, which is why you can see that would cause pain. All right, chronic gastritis is also called non-erosive gastritis, and it is most often associated with infections by Helicobacter pylori bacteria, which attacks the stomach's mucosal lining. When this is attacked, the chief and parietal cells that secrete hydrochloric acid, pepsin, and intrinsic factor, which are all needed for proper digestion and maintenance of the stomach's environment, um, are damaged. This causes a cycle of increased hydrochloric acid and gastric gastrin release, and followed by a low release of both. When high hydrochloric, with high hydrochloric acid, the mucosa is further eroded, making the environment for H. pylori growth even more ideal. Eventually, the parietal cells are totally destroyed, which leads to a chloridia, a reduction of acid secretion, and finally, gastric wall atrophy. Also, because the cells that secrete intrinsic factor are destroyed, the lack of intrinsic factor causes the stomach not to absorb B12, leading to pernicious anemia. Other conditions associated with chronic gastritis are lymphocytic and collagenous gastroenteropathies and chronic inflammatory conditions like Crohn's disease. During chronic gastritis, there is an infection of the gastric mucosa, attraction of neutrophils because of the infection, and release of oxyradicals from the neutrophils, which leads to further cell damage. There is also lymphocyte attraction, which can, on rare occasions, cause lymphoid follicles. All of these events precipitate the destruction of the stomach's mucosal lining and secretory cells, which lead to discomfort and other symptoms for the patient. All right, and some of the inflammatory markers or symptoms of gastritis is nausea or upset stomach, abdominal bloating, abdominal pain, vomiting, and vomiting can also include blood or coffee ground-like material, indigestion or burning of the stomach, hiccups, loss of appetite, or black tarry stools. And some of the causes of um, acute gastritis is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, bacterial infections, or excessive alcohol consumption. And then all the causes of acute can lead to uh, chronic gastritis, but others can include kidney failure, viral infections, persistent or intense stress, or bile flowing into the stomach. Okay, um, as we discussed earlier, acute is uh, sudden with uh, short burst only lasting a short amount of time. Uh, the physical assessment for acute um, could be bleeding from an erosion or ulcer, gastric outlet obstruction due to edema, limiting the adequate transfer of food from the stomach to the small intestines, dehydration from vomiting, renal insufficiency as a result of dehydration, 
bloody vomit that looks like used coffee grounds or black stool. Whereas chronic gastritis um, is of course over a shorter period of time and it's a longer period of time, excuse me, and it's gradually and over time. Uh, the physical assessment for chronic would be a test for bacteria that causes stomach ulcers, a stool test to look for stomach bleeding, a blood count and anemia test, an endoscopy which involves the use of a camera um, that attaches to a long tube that's inserted into your mouth which goes down into your digestive tract, and a culture to check the presence of H. pylori bacteria which causes stomach ulcers, and also a blood test to check for excessive alcohol consumption. All right, some nursing diagnoses for gastritis are nutrition less than body requirements related to inability to absorb nutrients as evidenced by anorexia or weight loss, chronic pain related to infection as evidenced by burning abdominal pain and atrophy of glandular stomach lining, risk for deficient fluid volume as evidenced by hematemesis, and impaired tissue integrity related to depletion of gastric mu mucus as evidenced by abdominal pain and nausea. These first three bullet points are more related to chronic gastritis, while the, la the last point can be indi indicate uh, both acute and chronic. Also, even though NSAIDs relieve inflammation experienced with gastritis, they actually deplete the gastric mucus, causing more irritation, thus causing impaired tissue integrity. Um, some things that you might want to teach a patient experiencing gastritis are Avoiding or ceasing har harmful activities such as excessive alcohol consumption and smoking. Alcohol and smoking can cause gastritis by increasing um, the production of stomach acid. Antacids can be used to alleviate symptoms by decreasing or neutralizing excess stomach acid and reduce or avoid spicy or hot foods as well as lactose and gluten because irritating foods such as these may cause irritation. Now we're going to look at some medications that could be prescribed with a patient with gastritis. To begin with, we're going to look at chronic gastritis. A first medication that could be prescribed is an antibiotic, and an example of this is amoxicillin or amoxitag. Um, the therapeutic class is an anti-infective agent, an anti-ulcer agent, and then the chemical class is an amino penicillins, which is an antibiotic. The action of this medication binds to the bacterial cell wall, causing cell death. Um, a nurse would want to be aware that this medication can be compromised with patients that have severe renal insufficiency, infectious mononucleosis, acute lymphocytic leukemia. An example of a dose that would be prescribed to this patient would be by mouth, and it's called a triple therapy which would be 1,000 milligrams of amoxicillin two times daily with two other medications known as lanzoprazole and clarithrombicin. The second medication is pantoprazole or protonix. The therapeutic class is an anti-ulcer agent and the chemical class is a proton pump inhibitor. This medication binds to an enzyme in the presence of an acidic gastric pH, preventing the final transport of hydrogen ions into the gastric lumen. A precaution with this medication is that it's contradicted in patients with hypersensitivity. An example of a dose would be by mouth, 40 milligrams, two times daily, and you would give up to 120 milligrams two times daily. The next medication, medication, excuse me, is bismuth subsalicitate, and this is also known as Pepto-Bismol. The therapeutic class for this medication is antidiarrheals and anti-ulcer agents, and the chemical class is absorbents. The action of this medication promotes intestinal absorption of fluids and electrolytes, which decreases synthesis of intestinal prostaglandins. A precaution with this medication is that you want to use caution used cautiously in patients undergoing, ra undergoing radiologic exams of the GI tract and patients that have diabetes and gout. The, um, this medication would be prescribed by mouth um, and you would give 524 milligrams four times daily and it could be either be given as two tablets or a suspension of liquid. 
So moving on to acute gastritis medications, you have an anti-acid, which is called Rolux, which is also aluminum and magnesium hydroxide oral suspension. The therapeutic class of this medication is an anti-ulcer agent, and the chemical is an anti-acid. The action of this medication neutralizes gastric acid with healing of ulcers and decreases in associated pain. A uh, precaution with this medication is that antacids containing milligrams in patients with any degree of renal insufficiency, decreased bowel motility and dehydration, it would be compromised in those patients. An example of a dose would be by mouth and you would give 5 to 30 milliliters or 1 to 2 tablets every 1 to 3 hours after mealtimes and at bedtime. The next medication is Kimetidine or Tagamet and that's an H2 blocker. Um, the therapeutic class is an anti-ulcer agent, and the chemical class is a histamine H2 antagonist. This me medication inhibits action of histamine at H2 receptor site, located primarily in gastric parietal cells, resulting in inhibition of gastric acid secretion. Precautions would be to use cautiously in renal failure. And a dosage would be for short-term treatment of um, active ulcers, you would give 300 milligrams four times daily. The last medication is Amiprazole or Prilosec. Uh, the therapeutic class is an anti-ulcer agent and the chemical class is a proton pump inhibitor. It binds to an enzyme on gastric parietal cells in the presence of acidic gastric pH preventing the final transport of H plus ions into gastric lumen. You would want to use cautiously in patients that have liver disease and you would want to give them a lower dosage. Um, and safety is not established in pregnant or breastfeeding women. A dosage would be 400 milligrams one times daily for four to six weeks and this would be prescribed differently, differently for a critical ill patient. For acute gastritis, the doctor generally can diagnose without performing tests by just talking to the patient. However, when doctors do test to diagnose, an upper endoscopy exam or complete blood count can be done. The EGD allows the doctor to view the stomach to see inflammation and abnormalities by inserting a tube with a lens down the throat into the esophagus, stomach, and small intestine. The CBC tests for bleeding from the mucosal. The doctor looks for a decrease in red blood cells per liter or for raised levels of leukocytes pointing to inflammation. Chronic gastritis is tested by an EGD with a biopsy. Process for the EGD is the same as for acute gastritis, but when a suspicious area is found, a small sample of tissue is removed to examine. Biopsy helps to diagnose and can help specify a type of gastritis. The H. pylori test is done to diagnose the patient as being infected with the H. pylori bacteria. This is done by a breath test. After the patient drinks a glass of liquid containing radioactive carbon, the bacteria breaks down the liquid in the stomach and later, when blowing into a bag, the presence of H. pylori is shown by the presence of radioactive carbon in the breath sample. X-ray tests can also be used to show a thickened mucosa and folds from inflammation. For this test, the patient drinks liquid with barium to coat the digestive tract, helping abnormalities show up more prominently in the X-ray. Finally, a full blood count is done, where the doctor is primarily looking for a loss in blood. A hematocrit and mean corpuscular volume test can also be used, where the doctor looks for a decrease in volume percentage or red blood cells due to blood loss. Okay, and for our case study, we did a 37-year-old male presents to the emergency department with abdominal pain and vomiting. When asking what he has done to relieve pain, he reports that he has been continually taking ibuprofen every couple of hours and that he that has relieved the symptoms. He reports that the abdominal pain started three days ago and that he began vomiting this morning. While taking his health history, he reports drinking excessive amounts of alcohol every night. His mother has osteoporosis and his father has hypertension. He suffers from seasonal allergies and treats his symptoms with over-the-counter etcetrants. All right, question number one. Which of the following does the patient have? Chronic gastritis, peptic ulcer disease, acute gastritis, or stomach cancer? And the answer is C, acute gastritis. Question number two. Which of the following symptoms are related to acute gastritis? Select all that apply. Abdominal pain, pain relief abuse, family history of osteoporosis, alcohol abuse, expectorant use for seasonal allergies, family history of hypertension, and vomiting. The answers are abdominal pain, pain relief abuse, alcohol abuse, and vomiting.
and here are our sources.